Welcome to EV Zone YouTube channel. In this episode, we will answer the 10 most common questions that EV lovers, enthusiasts, haters, and the undecided are asking, and explore the intricate technology that drives these innovative machines. I am your host, Max, and I'm excited to guide you through this electrifying journey. Today, we're diving into the top 10 questions every EV owner would want to know, from range anxiety and charging times to the big one, battery safety. We're covering it all, whether you're already driving electric or just EV curious, this video explain the most 10 commonly asked questions. Let's get right into it. Question one. What happens to my EV if it's involved in a serious accident? Uh, if uh, your EV is involved in a serious accident, several things could happen depending on the severity of the crash. Most modern EVs are equipped with advanced safety features, such as automatic disconnect systems that isolate the battery in the event of a crash to prevent fires. Structural damage to the car may occur, similar to what you'd see in a traditional vehicle in a serious collision. The battery could be affected, and if it's compromised, there could be additional risks, including the potential for a thermal runaway where the battery catches fire. Battery replacement can be costly, with some reports suggesting it could be close to the value of the car itself if the entire battery needs to be replaced. Question two. Will my EV battery survive in an accident? Uh, EV batteries generally survive most accidents, except in cases of severe impact. The survival of an EV battery in an accident depends on the severity of the impact and the area of the car where the collision occurs. EV batteries are typically well protected by the vehicle structure and uh, are designed to withstand significant forces. In um, minor to moderate accidents, the battery is often undamaged. However, in a severe collision, there is a possibility that the battery could be compromised, just like petrol, gas engine cars, which could lead to reduced performance or safety risks. Question three, what would the cost be if my EV battery gets damaged in the event of an accident? If your AV battery is damaged in, in an accident, the replacement cost can be substantial, varying from manufacturer to manufacturer, depending on the make and model of the vehicle. However, many insurance policies cover battery replacement if it is damaged in a covered incident. Some manufacturers also offer warranties that cover battery damage for a certain period. Always consult your EV manufacturer for more details. Question four. Insurance cost. Yeah, uh, insurance costs for EVs can be higher than for traditional vehicles, primarily due to the higher cost of repairs and replacement parts, particularly the battery. However, don't be alarmed as EV adoption grows and more data on repair costs become available. Insurance rates are expected to stabilize and become more affordable, similar to their traditional counterparts. Question five. High repair costs. Repair costs for EVs can be higher than for traditional petrol gas vehicles especially for issues involving the battery, electric motor, or specialized components. 
This is primarily because EV technology is new, and there are currently fewer qualified technicians and service centers. Parts can be more expensive, and fewer mechanics are trained to service them, which can lead to higher labor costs. However, EVs generally have fewer moving parts, which can mean fewer repairs over the vehicle's lifetime. Additionally, as more people adopt EVs, there will be more trained technicians and specialists available, and as a result, service costs are expected to become more affordable, similar to those for traditional vehicles. Question 6. Resale value. Uh, the resale value of EVs is still being determined and will require a few more years to fully understand. Many EV experts believe that the resale value of EVs can vary widely based on factors such as brand, battery condition and market demand. It is believed that EVs will depreciate faster than traditional cars, largely due to concerns about battery life and the rapid pace of technological advancements. However, it is believed certain models, especially those with longer ranges and well-maintained batteries, can retain their value better over time. Question 7. Range anxiety. Range anxiety refers to the concern that an EV may not have enough battery charge to reach its destination. While this was a significant issue in the early days of EVs, modern vehicles often have ranges exceeding 200, 300 miles on a full charge. Additionally, the expanding network of charging stations and improvements in charging speed, as well as advancements in technology, are helping to alleviate this anxiety in the newer EVs that are coming out these days. Question 8. Charging time. Charging times for EVs vary based on the type of charger used. A standard level 1 charger, 120V, can take 8, 20 hours to fully charge an EV depending on the battery size. Level 2 chargers, 240V, can reduce this time to 4, 8 hours. DC fast chargers can charge an EV to 80% in about 30 minutes to an hour. While charging times are longer compared to refueling a gasoline car, advancements in charging technology are continually reducing these times. Additionally, technological advancements like battery swapping programs in some advanced countries, if successful, could significantly eliminate charging time, allowing EV owners to recharge in minutes, similar to refueling petrol gas cars. Question 9. Adequate service centers and specialized technicians. Yes, it's true that uh, at the time of the creation of this video, there are limited service centers and uh, qualified technicians. However, this will change in the near future as EVs become more widely used. As EV adoption increases, so will the number of service centers and technicians trained to work on electric vehicles. That said, in some regions the availability of specialized technicians can still be limited. Major automakers and independent repair shops are investing in training programs to address this gap, but it's still a developing area. Question 10. Will EV charging stations be standardized? Um, there is some standardization among EV charging stations, but it's not universal. Most EVs use the SAE JU Sandan 72 connector for level 1 and level 2 charging, while Tesla vehicles use a proprietary connector, though adapters are available. For DC fast charging, the most common standards are CHAADEMO and CCS, Combined Charging System. Tesla Supercharger Network uses its own connector in North America, but is increasingly compatible with CCS. The push for standardization is ongoing to simplify the charging experience for all EV owners. We've covered some of the most pressing questions about EVs from accidents and insurance costs to charging times and the future of standardization. As the electric vehicle landscape continues to evolve, 
it's clear that there are both challenges and exciting advancements ahead. Whether you're already an EV owner, considering making the switch, or just curious, staying informed is key. I hope you find this video helpful. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey to the world of EVs. Whether you're an enthusiast or simply curious about the future of transportation, stay tuned for more exciting content on EV Zone. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, and share this video to support our channel.